engines sat in the sheds one morning as their crews walked around them preparing them for the day's work. To pass the time, Gordon was, as usual, boasting about himself to the others. My brothers and I are all powerful express engines, he gloated, always ready to fly down the line with our passengers. The other engines rolled their eyes, but Thomas was intrigued. Do you have any brothers, Gordon? asked Thomas. Oh yes, and many cousins too. They're all big and important like me. I had brothers too, Thomas said solemnly. Oh really? said Gordon. You always seemed one of a kind to me. Always so annoying Edward shushed the big engine. Go on, Thomas, Edward smiled. Well, I had nine to be exact. But they're all gone now. What happened to them? asked Edward. Retired or put out of service? I'm afraid that most of them have been scrapped by now. Oh my! exclaimed Henry. We are sorry, Thomas. We didn't know. We've all had brothers sent for scrap, Edward added. It's a horrifying thing to think about. But none of us were ever very close to our brothers, but it seemed like you were, Thomas. The engines were sad to see that Thomas was becoming very emotional, even Gordon. They all felt sorry for Thomas. I loved my brother, said Thomas with a broken voice, especially Timothy. Timothy? asked Henry. He was my oldest brother and my best friend, Thomas said. It will take a while to explain. Tell us, Thomas. It'll make you feel better, Percy said. Yes, said James. We've got plenty of time until our first James. And so Thomas began his story. My brothers and I were built many years ago near the south coast of England. Timothy was the first built and I was the middle. The ten of us were all very close, working in and around the Martian yards and docks. Timothy, being the oldest, looked after all of us and was something of a father figure, especially to me being the youngest. Wonderful, Thomas, Edward remarked. The other engines agreed. Yes, Timothy was a wonderful brother. One day, one of the bigger engines was making fun of me after I foolishly derailed a truck without waiting for the points to be changed. Timothy was furious and went buffer to buffer with the big engine, telling him what an awful engine he was to be making fun of the smaller engines. Without engines like Thomas, you might not ever have coal for your tender and water for your tanks, he said. The big engine got the message and left me alone after that. Timothy was very persuasive. Sounds like we could have used him around here, Percy chuckled, motioning to Gordon. He and I spent many nights talking about, well, everything. From coaches to the stars in the sky, Timothy always took time to talk to me. No question was ever too stupid, and he always had a word of advice for me. You remind me a lot of myself when I was your age. Always ready for anything, but never be afraid to be yourself, Thomas, and always take opportunities when they're presented to you. One day, my crew and I were informed that I had been bought by a faraway railway. It turned out later that this had been from Sir Topham Hatt. I didn't want to leave England, but Timothy reassured me and said, You're growing up to be a fine tank engine. It's time for you to go off on your own and show them what us E2s can do. Thomas paused. He found it hard to speak thinking about how bittersweet his departure was. The engines were respectfully silent as Thomas gathered his strength to continue again. I arrived to the island of Sodor, and my driver and fireman found that they really liked the people here, and both were soon married. I began to enjoy my new home too, but always felt guilty for living Timothy, even though I knew it was for the best. But I never heard from Timothy again. No matter how many letters my driver sent, we never got a reply. Maybe he was too busy, Percy suggested. I wish that were true, Thomas sighed. One day we did get a letter, but it wasn't from Timothy. It was from one of my other brothers. What did it say? Thomas gulped. It said that Timothy had plunged off a new viaduct they were constructing near the harbour. His brakes had failed and he couldn't stop at the station. 
Thankfully, there hadn't been any passengers on his train, and his driver and fireman had jumped clear. But Timothy didn't make it. And I miss him more every day. Oh, how I wish I could have spoken to him one last time, Thomas said. The engines didn't know what to say. They had no idea that Thomas had been suffering for so many years with the knowledge of his brother's demise. But it was apparent that Gordon's boasting about his brothers, some of whom were still healthy and running well, had been in poor taste. Later that afternoon, Gordon approached Thomas who was sitting at the station with Annie and Clarabelle. I hope you will forgive me for boasting about my brothers this morning, said Gordon. I didn't know it was such a sensitive area for you. That's okay, Gordon, Thomas smiled. I will always miss Timothy, but he was right when he said that I should take opportunities when they are presented to me. Though I left him in England, I will never regret coming here and meeting all of you. And we're glad to have you here too. We will always look out for you. Thomas simply beamed. Though he didn't have his big brother anymore, he had a lot of peace in knowing that he had family here on Sodor too.